The second part of our presentation tonight, I'm very, very happy to introduce another friend of mine running for the nomination to the Republican Party for the 4th District United States Congress, Fran Becker. Thank you, thank you, Frank. Thank you so much for having me tonight and allowing me to, to address your, uh, your group here. See some many familiar faces. First of all, I really want to uh, thank each and every one of you, uh, uh, or at least the Tea Party, just in general. Um, uh, when I ran against I ran against Carol McCarthy uh, uh, two years ago, you may recall, and uh, I had tremendous Tea Party support. And uh, you stood with me, and I stood with you uh, on various different uh, rallies that you had, and uh, we were extremely successful. We almost beat Carol McCarthy that go around it's by six points. We just came up a little bit short. Uh, and I'm hoping that uh, with your support and your help this, this year, we're going to beat her and, and send her to, uh, into retirement fully and let her go out to the Hamptons where she really wants to be anyway. And, uh, and you know, I thought that, Frank, it wasn't uh, rocks in your head. I thought it was seashells. The sand is good, but it's the seashells that, that break the problem. But in uh, any case, uh, as I said, uh, I was very, very honored to run two years ago, and we were just about almost took Carolyn McCarthy out. Um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, uh, for those who don't know me, uh, I come from a family of 12, and the greatest gift uh, my parents gave me was, was the gift of faith. And uh, uh, having 12 brothers and sisters, trust me, you learn to, to be an entre entrepreneur at a very, very young age, because you've got to make, uh, make your own money along the way. And uh, I'm very blessed uh, to be married to my wife, Clementine, for 37 years now. She's the greatest gift God has ever given me, is, is her love. And I have uh, three beautiful girls and, uh, and six grandkids. So. Uh, you know, the, raising a family in Nassau County, which, which we all know is not, not easy at times. Uh, taxes are very high here. And uh, so, and I also have uh, run my own business. I'm a certified financial planner. So I meet with families like yourself each and every day and, and help them map their futures and, and hear their struggles as well as uh, trying to achieve the, the goals and visions that they have for their families. And, uh, and of course, many of you know that I sit in the Nassau County Legislature as one of the original legislators in in 1996 to be elected, and uh, I'm very proud of my record on the county legislature. Unfortunately, for a great part of that time, I was uh, in the minority. And, uh, you know, to try to, you know, fight uh, when you're in the minority is always tough, but I fight the, fought the good fight, and uh, we voted against uh, tax increases and many other things that the, at that time, the Democrat majority was per, uh, pursuing, which we felt were not good for Nassau County. One of the greatest mistakes I felt they made, and I fought uh, hardly and uh, was not successful along the way was the assessment system in Nassau County. But in 2009, we were very fortunate, in my opinion, to have Ed Manigano elected Nassau County, uh, Nassau County Executive, and of course to take the majority uh, uh, of the legislature. And I, I am personally, the paradigm of, of politics in Nassau County changed uh, when Ed Manigano was elected. In the old days, and you may recall, if somebody had problems and their, you had a budget deficit and so forth, uh, what you do is you raise taxes, and, and then you blame the guy who just went out, and, uh, and then, you know, you raise the taxes, and you know, nothing would be resolved, but the, then everything looked great because you got things back to some sort of financial stability. Uh, Ed Mangano and the, uh, excuse me, Ed Mangano and the Republican majority, we changed the paradigm. We said, look, you know, the public can't take this anymore. Uh, we're just not going to do, you know, the, the, the easy thing to do, which is to raise taxes. And, of course, we know we're overtaxed to begin with. So we pledged to the residents of Nassau County, and Ed did, that we were not going to raise taxes. And, of course, you've seen the fallout from that. It took a lot, a lot of courage to do that, but I'm very proud of that. For the past two years, we've had a budget that uh, we've not raised taxes. And I think uh, not, on, not only that, we killed the energy tax that we felt was wrong to begin with. So uh, we, took, we, we, we stood you know, against tax increases, and I think that's benefited us here in Nassau County in many respects. But of course, when you do that, and, the, and once again, we were, the fact of the matter is that Tom Swazi and Democrats left us with a $310 million deficit. $310 million deficit, but we, we were going to deal with the issue, and we said we're not going to, whatever the money is, just like you and your households, have coming in, that's what we're going to spend. Only that which we, we that, that, uh, that's coming in presently. And of course, that had to, some tough decisions with the, the precincts. We had the, the police who were very, very unpopular with the police unions and, and others, uh, but that's been successful. Uh, 
up to this particular point. Uh, we took a look at the MTA, the, the bus system, and we said, en enough, you know, the MTA wanted another $11 million from us, we're going to cut the routes in half. It was a joke. And we said, enough, we're not doing it. And we, we have a great organization now at this particular point. I hear nothing but positive things. If you hear anything differently, I want to know about it. You can call my office at any time. I'm ex extremely accessible. And that's one of the things I'm very proud about my record as well is, you know, the government part is, is, is important to everybody. But you want to legislate it. When you, when you have a concern, you can call them up. You can email them. And it's going to respond. And that's what I do. I have helped thousands of people, and my phone number is still in the book. And when people call me at home, they say, I'm sorry, didn't really want to bother you. You're no bother. That's my job. I'm here 24 7 to help you and to serve you. And if I'm ever fortunate enough to be your representative of Congress, you'll be able to get me on the phone in the same way. And this won't be the last meeting you see me on the phone. Uh, you know, I, because when I know something, uh, I firmly believe that change in this country uh, will only come with you and with the public. And, uh, and this is, this is critical. It came in, in Nassau County, and it's going to come in this country if we stand and we fight together. Um, so uh, the, 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 the issues that uh, I also feel, uh, get on a broader theme of what's happening in this country. I'm not going to tell you anything you don't already know. But I tell you, for the, for the parents here and the grandparents, and I told you, I have six grandkids. And I want to tell you, lately, lately, not a day goes by that I'm not thinking about them. I'm not thinking about the country. I'm going to leave my kids and my grandkids. And it's shocking and it's shameful, in my personal opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, this is nothing new to you, but, but how, do you, how do you add $5 trillion to the national deficit? $5 trillion in only four years. It's, it's, it's criminal. It's, in my opinion, it's, it's near criminal to do something like that. Uh, no matter what the circumstances are, it's wrong. And in fact, I heard uh, on the... Uh, on the radio recently, that, you know, you hear these statistics or these analogies, and one of them was that uh, that the, our grandchildren, those who were not even born yet, and those who were born and, uh, and those who were not born yet, their the total amount of taxes that they will create or, or provide in, during their lifetime has already been spent. Has already been spent. Um, now, you know, I'm st I'm preaching to the choir because you part the Tea Party people are activists, and I thank God for you each and every day. I truly do. Uh, you made an enormous change in Washington, but let's look what happened. And you know, no disrespect to the Congress people that we, you know, I consider myself a Tea Party person in philosophy. Uh, the, the, when they were forced to raise raise the the, the national debt. You know, the, the, the political wheels started turning down in, in Washington, right? And I understand where they're at unless there's a commitment not to do certain things. They had to raise this, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the national debt limit. Why? Because politically it might destroy the Republican Party or whomever. Uh, they had great courage, uh, the Tea Party Congress people down there, and they continue to show great courage. And we've got to add more people there to fight with them. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to just present something to you that's been in my heart and in my mind for, for a long, long time. You know, there's a war going on. And uh, the war, this war is, it is not going to be waged in the, uh, in the beaches of Normandy or, or, or Gettysburg. This war is going to be for the hearts and minds of every American. And uh, it, it, today and, and moving forward, and, and especially our young people, we have to make them aware that, uh, that their future is being spent. And uh, I'm, I'm doing the best that I can to, to meet with young people, and I promise you and pledge to you that if I'm elected your congressperson, one of the things I will do is I will get on the campuses, I'll meet with anybody, anybody who will listen to me to, to bring this, this issue to their attention so they understand it. Um, I, you know, I look, people that I, I respect and, and admire, uh, you know, uh, our former president, uh, uh, George Bush, and, and, uh, and Ronald Reagan, even the great, great conservative, um, I'm sure most of you admire. Uh, and, but you know, at the end of the day, it's always shocking to me when you think about it that when he left office, and he had consistent budget deficits. Nothing like this guy's, you know what I mean? I mean, the way our countries go, we may have to ask Greece for a bailout. Uh, <laughs> but uh, nothing like the way this guy is going. It's my, you know, my fellow Americans and Tea Party people, um, uh, I, I think in my heart and my mind, and you look, even look at you know, Bush, George Bush, and other supposedly great conservative, and you know, sometimes the forces are against you in politics, the forces of, of the, the other side that really want to see, in my opinion, the destruction of our great country, um, uh, the, the forces are very much against us. So I think that one of the things that we really have to fight for, if I'm fortunate enough to get to Congress, I'm going to need your help and want your help, I think is a balanced budget amendment. 
Um, it's not a sexy thing. People don't balance budget men. It's not even new, for, ladies and gentlemen. But if you think about it, if we create, and if you get the Tea Party organizations across this nation, this is one thing that you could do. You know, sometimes I look at it as, a, as, as you, know, you have a, a, a mother and a father and you have children, right? And, you know, the good parent always says to the kid, no, sometimes. No, you got to earn that. you got to do this. you got to do that. A good parent does that. We know that bad parents often enable their kids. They give them everything they want, and they grow up without real purpose and meaning. We understand that. But, you know, you have a situation here where maybe the children, you've got bad parents now in Washington, and maybe it's the kids who've got to, you know, do a little tough love to Washington, in the way I feel it. And us using the analogy, this residents being, or the citizens being, the, the children to the, to the, to the government. Um, it's not sexy, it's, but I think that, and I'm hoping that, uh, that you would be inspired like I am, that this may be the only answer uh, to really stopping this insane spending in Washington. Now, obviously you're not going to do it all at once. It can't be done all at once, but, but you, you create an amendment that within six years, six years, you have to get the house in order, and, uh, and there will be no more, no more uh, spending beyond what you, uh, what you have coming in. You know, all states, even you, know, you may have some geometry, geometry in, 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 in budgeting, uh, both on the state and the, uh, and, and the county levels, but at the end of the day, the, bullet, the budget has to be balanced. The bullet, budget has to be balanced. And uh, I, I would really enjoy, if, even after this session, to hear your feelings about this, or you can shoot me an email, Becker for Congress, you can shoot any of your thoughts that you feel, but, but I feel the next great challenge, I mean, you got the majority in Congress, you didn't get the majority in the Senate, uh, which could change. But in the end of the day, if the budget keeps on going up and over, they keep on raising the, 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 the national uh, debt limit, how does that help us? Now, of course, we also know the issue about jobs and things of that nature, and of course, we, we don't have an expanding economy which would help jobs and, of course, uh, revenues. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm really feeling in my heart and my mind that that is the answer. That if you could, especially the Tea and I see the Tea Party being the people to, to, to make this happen. Uh, state to state across the nation, because you're already in existence, the Tea Party, and very, very strong in many, many areas. And you would have the foot soldiers to get the signatures and get these things on the ballot, and let's finally get a balanced budget amendment going, that no matter Republican, Democrat, or, or Ron Paul, whomever's down there, that they understand that you have to balance your budget. It's as simple as that. And maybe with the only exception if it was a war in this country. I believe it is a final thought that I would have loved if, you know, with, with wars that we would have had if they would have did war bonds or something like that instead of, instead of taking the money uh, directly out of, uh, of cash flow. <coughs> you know, have, have war bonds that used to work in, in World War II and other uh, wars. Uh, you know, you pay a modest interest rate. I know that this country is so great that we would have been able to easily fund any war that we had in that regard. So, um, thank you so much for having me tonight. I really enjoyed being with you. And let's get things done for the stage and get it back on track. Thank you, Fred. And I'll be uh, taking some questions from the floor uh, for uh, Mr. Becker. Sir. Mr. Becker, I would like to know your thoughts. Uh, since you are in the uh, Nassau County Legislature, yes. on Mangano hiring the former city manager of Long Beach, who was in office for this city, for this tent. You know, uh, you know, I, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't really, I, I wasn't aware of that even until most recently. Some of the hiring that the county executive is going to do, I'm not going to be familiar with. So uh, it doesn't sound like a good idea, but once again, I, I can't speak for him, and he'd have to answer that question for you. Yes. Uh, what do you think you can do about the school districts? Don't, can't you consolidate, do anything about consolidating as you have to leave the park? Yeah. The school superintendents make a new sound, they have huge staffs, they all make, you know, good money and everything. Is there anything you think you could possibly be done about that? Yeah. No, once again, you have to remember that uh, that's outside the purview of the, the county legislature. But you have to remember that the, the, uh, the school tax is one of the one taxes that, the, or that you everybody gets to vote on. I mean, you have direct control over that. And so, but you know what happens? The, uh, you, you don't have direct control over that? You get to vote, you get to vote on the budget, don't you? But you know what? You know what's interesting? 
You know what's interesting? I wonder if the Tea Party got as active in, 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 in school elections, school board, school board and school elections, if you would not see a change. You see, everybody is afraid to say, well, you know, it's about the kids and everything, you know, the teachers, you know, roll out the, the you know, the, the worry wagon and, you know, this is, uh, the kids don't have this, they're going to lose this, they're going to lose that. And, um, you know, it, it takes it takes a movement. You want to change it? It takes a movement to, to say to everybody, look, we've had enough with our school taxes. I'm only one person. I'm not going to tell you how I vote when I go into the, to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, to vote for the school budgets and so forth, but it takes a movement. It takes it. Years ago, you had a, you know, uh, it was a different. It was very similar to the Tea Party group. I forget what they were called. They were uh, a, a group that they were had just had it with school taxes. They got people on the boards and they, they voted down many school budgets, but not much changed. But um, I think that it takes it takes uh, it takes a movement. And, you know, if the Tea Party feels strongly about that, and I happen to agree with them, uh, they should take action. And all you have to do is create, as I said, an organization that uh, is, you know opposes school budgets or fellows. So look at the fellow, the young fellow who got elected uh, school board president. He basically got elected because it was wrong to have a four hundred thousand uh, dollars, you know, uh, uh, superintendent. You know, this is this is America. This is democracy. If everybody believes strongly in something, you stand up and you do it. We do want to uh, we do want to get can uh, candidates for school board, library board, and. Uh, also, even city council, uh, and then, how about inspectors? There's a sign-up list for inspectors uh, to man the uh, voting booths. You know, there's a lot of lot of uh, tricks that have always been pulled in Long Beach, but it's going to be big time across the country this year. Yeah. Be come an inspector, be the eyes and ears of honest voting. So uh, uh, think locally and uh, act globally. Uh, more questions, please. <clears throat> Mr. Becker, you uh, sent out a mailing saying, referring to um, Frank Scutturo's uh, being like a Democrat. How do you consider him to be like a Democrat? <clears throat> Well, that's that's you know something we do during the campaign, and uh, you but know, he, yes, well, I, I don't know. Uh, I would think that basically that he's worked with the the, the judge down there, the, the senator who was once at one time supposed to be Republican, and he, that's his claim to fame. So uh, I think that that could be applied to that him. Makes sure, him a Democrat? sure, absolutely, it could be applied to him. He worked for them. He worked with the Democrats. Um, I'd like to know, Mr. Becker's thoughts on uh, Eric Holder's lawsuits of, uh, against the states for voter ID against uh, the sheriff in Arizona. Well, it's going to be a little wrong. It's an abuse of power. Absolute abuse of power. Is it unconstitutional? Uh, I would think it is. There's many things the government's doing that are unconstitutional right now. You have the, uh, the, you know, the uh, Defense of Marriage Act that's not being supported. A whole, a whole bunch of things. It's pick and choose with this administration. If you were in Washington right now, how would you handle that? As far as, there's two ways to approach anything in government. One is, is, is where the way you vote, for one thing. The other two is, is, is the bully pulpit that you use uh, to, to, uh, to condemn something or, or, but once again, you know, in my, in my mind, at this particular point, the two tremendous issues facing this nation are the, uh, are the uh, uh, is the overspending. Five trillion dollars. If we don't do that, there's not going to be an America left for anything. Why don't we have a budget? Yes, right here from. I just told you, I, I'm looking for your help to, to start a movement for a balanced budget amendment. I think it's the only way we're going to save this country. That's what I do. Frank. Yes. Um, How you doing? Uh, so, uh, balanced budget amendment? Yes. What would stop Congress from simply raising taxes and seizing other people's assets even more? To close the gap, if you did get it out of You know what happens is, is at this particular point, um, we as Tea Party people, or Republicans and conservatives, say, you know, enough with the taxes. And I believe if you have a balanced budget amendment, then you have to deal with it, like we dealt with it in Nassau County. It can be done. It can be done. You can stop spending. You have to deal with the issues of Social Security and Medicaid and other issues such as that. You know, then there's, there's this rampant fraud. You read about it every day, billions and billions of dollars. In fact, in the in the in the um, in the uh, in the healthcare system, they say that because of uh, 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 because of unnecessary um, you know requirements for tests and other things, that, that is, you're looking at about 100 to 200 billion additional dollars. 
I can only take one question. But, but, but yet, the, if the budget still isn't isn't balanced, mm -hmm. and there's still a gap, and you, but you did, but we do what we're doing here in Nassau County. Then I know it can be done. You just keep on doing it. You just say you're not raising taxes, and you take one issue at a time, and that's what you do. That's not that's not a good answer. You're not, that doesn't satisfy you. Uh, yeah. Well, why? Okay, that's what you have to do. You can't say exactly what we step away. There, there is an answer, and that is. What's that your answer? Within the amendment, you have to, uh, you have to cap spending. Yeah. Spending has mm -hmm. to be capped by and that has to be part of any balanced budget. I, that sounds good to me. <laughs> sounds good to me. And the uh, in the back. Hey, friend. Yes. Um, you're obviously in front of a Tea Party group. You keep talking about we the Tea Party, yes. yet I, I hear that three weeks ago at a meeting of the Republican leadership in Westbury, mm -hmm. Chairman Mondello introduced you ripping the Tea Party and saying, that's why we have to vote for Fran Becker, and you were applauding. Oh, really? yeah. So could you please address no, I, that? I wasn't there. At that. I wasn't there. You I were applauding it. it. It was your introduction. I wasn't there. I didn't hear it. But all I can tell you what's in my heart and mind. And uh, I only can tell you what's in my So opinion. are you going to say we the Tea Party to Chairman Mandela? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I say what's in my heart and mind all the time. That's why I'm not everybody's favorite person, and you know that to be the truth. Okay, next uh, question from the back also. Are you sure? Yes. 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 Well, what's happening at this particular point is it's customary in the county, although we're now putting it in, in, into a law, that we will finally stop the, 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 the payment of tax search awards when you sue the county because it's, you've over -attack, been overtaxed, which is a tragedy to me to begin with, it, you know, that the government can't even properly assess its people uh, and its, uh, its uh, businesses and homes. But uh, it's, it's customary because you're not going to be able to take $42 million out of your cash flow to bond these, uh, these, uh, these payments. And we're at a particular point right now where the Democrat, uh, Democrat it requires 13 votes, and we have 10. And we want to pass this bond uh, so that we can pay back the people uh, the money that we owe them, which is rightfully theirs. Uh, and if we don't do that, there's the potential that there will be judgments against the county, and uh, they could freeze our, our assets or our bank accounts. So uh, that's where we're at at this particular point. Uh, we're sort of at a stalemate because of the... Uh, well, why is Nyfer why is blocking it? I could I for basically their their feeling is in, in working with the county executive that he's supposed to come up with like a hundred, hundred and fifty million dollars in actual savings before they'll do any more bonding. But it's it's not something that's essentially grained in stone. The two individuals uh, you know have to work together, including the county legislature. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like most people in this room, uh, I'm a capitalist, I'm a free enterprise, I'm a concern. Mm -hmm. I want to bring something to the attention that a lot of people might not be aware of. Uh, and, and I'm a firm proponent of the Second Amendment. Remember the NRA? Mm -hmm. And in the latest American Rifleman magazine, uh, there's a meeting coming up next month, I believe, at the UN, where Obama and Eric Holder want to put all gun control under the auspices of the United Nations. I think it's called the United Nations Firearms Control Act. God forbid that would happen. We won't be able to have our firearms. I'm talking about law-abiding citizens now. They want, they want to tax ammunition 500%. And these are all things that they want to take away. Not that we're going to be furious, but we're furious, where uh, Daniel Ice is trying to get to the bottom of it. We all know that an agent was killed. That was nothing but a sham. And trying to go against all the retail gun owners in the country. It's something I think people ought to, if you're not aware of it, just pull up the NRA website. And if anything about it, they're trying to put the Second Amendment under the control of the United Nations. And we know how good that will be. Well, we know that, we know that uh, Obama's trying to rewrite the Constitution, so <coughs> dispose of it entirely. Next uh, Saturday, I'm going to be taking my haunting class on the second and third over in Mitchell Field. Got a, a breech loading 305. I'm going to go up for deer, but you know, I said. Those wild pigs have gotten all the way up to central New York, feral pigs. And I at first said, I'm not going to let those pigs take over central New York, because they already took over Albany. No more pigs. No more Harvey. No more uh, pig in our pocket. For the uh, Second Amendment all the way, right? Good question. Uh, Ray. Yeah. 
What is your position on the privatization of, or the possible consideration of the privatization of the sewer treatment plants for Nassau County, which really have, would have a direct impact on Reynolds Channel? And if you do support it, I know it's just an idea that's being explored. If you do support it, what safeguards do you feel could be put in place to protect the county uh, residents of the uh, treat, the treatment of products that would be treated in the sewer treatment plant, specifically the, um, the waste products of fracking? Well, fracking has uh, been, we voted in the legislature, fracking is illegal on Long Island. We voted for that. It's gone. It's not going to happen here. Nobody can bring any fracking materials down this way. Okay? Uh, this, this, I'm not, I don't want to get a long discussion because many of you are reading about it, but the, the real key is, is that, the, that if, if we move forward with this privatization, that it's going to be a lease. So if anything along the way, if, for example, if they don't follow through on the things that they're supposed to do as far as the lease is concerned, we, we can take the whole system back. Um, there's, there's many benefits, there's some minor dimensions to that, but one of the things that, uh, there's, there's two issues, you know, of course, uh, I'm, you know, I grew up on Long Island, I grew up, up on the South Shore, you know, I had a boat when I was on the waters, and of course we all see the change, but I'm told there's two things. One, one of course, is the sewage that's being, uh, treated sewage that's being pumped into the uh, Reynolds Channel. The other thing, too, is because of the urbaniz suburbanization of Long Island, you have, uh, you have more concrete and less grass, and you have less absorption of the water, so a lot of the storm water takes, you know, the, the fertilizers and the salt and the oil and the grease out into the bay, and that's a problem. You've all noticed and seen that there's a big push, uh, you know, with it, especially with our Environmental Bond Act, we put, we're putting in some of the, into the traps that have filters and so forth, and we've got to make sure as citizens that they're clean on, on, a regular, on a regular basis. But you know, one of the things that I really want to fight for, if I have the opportunity to go to Washington, is, uh, is the outflow pipe. I think that that's truly the answer for us here in the Western Bays, and that would be one of my prime focuses getting down there. Of course, it's not a lot of money to go around uh, at this particular point, but it should be considered in, 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 in any kind of a massive capital project that the United States is doing, and that would really be a wonderful thing. Uh, you know, we, they have one out at Cedar Creek where you have the sewage goes two miles out, I believe, and that would be just, uh, uh, you know, my opinion, the thing that I, that I would like to fight for if, if I get there is to, is to see if there's any way that we could find the funding. They say it's about $500 million to do that. It seems like a lot, but, but never, nowadays when you see any kind of government project, it seems to be double what it was originally projected to be. But I think for the Western Bays, uh, and I've been doing a lot of study in this and I've attended a lot of meetings, that would really be the, the you know, the, the, the golden solution for all of us here. At least you may not get rid of the, uh, you know, the, the sewer stuff as much, but certainly to have that, uh, to have any treated sewage, you know, out to, you know, two miles out in the ocean would be a wonderful, wonderful thing for us here. Now I was going to call up the questions right here, but I see that Colonel Peterson has a question, and I'm going to let him have this last word. Right after this, so we're going to have, every tea party always has to have it a soapbox. We're going to hear from you. No politicians, no leaders. We're just going to hear you come up and say what's on your mind. But first, Colonel Peterson, what do you have to say? I appreciate your coming down to address this group tonight. My pleasure to be with you. Exposing yourself to slings and arrows. And, it's okay. And also supporters as well, perhaps. My question is this. Uh, the balanced budget amendment seems to me, in my own narrow little world, to be a very 80s, 90s, last century solution to a problem that has far outgrown one of limiting spending. Because what we have now is a federal government itself that has grown far, far beyond its constitutional uh, authorization it is insinuating itself into the daily life and undermining the will of our citizens on a daily basis and that is costing us a fortune. It's not a matter simply of balancing a budget, you raise taxes, then we're legal. No. I would like to know what you and what each congressional candidate will do throughout this country not to reset the table linen and, and line up the silverware, but kick the table over, gas the rats that have been eating at the legs of liberty. That is where the real problem is. Are there very specific agencies with 
within the federal government, particularly within the executive, that you as a member of Congress, a Tea Party member of Congress, would revolutionary change that returns us to counter-revolution. What would you do to limit, to eliminate whole sections of that excess of, are there particular, being a Tea Party guy, are there elements within that government now that you see are particularly uh, deserving of elimination at the cabinet level? Just about all of them. I can about four. But, but listen, you know something. No, not I, just about all. No, 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 I want to name me one. I, I, think, I, think, I think you're wrong in one regard. I don't think it's a 50-60 it's a thing of the, the balanced budget amendment. I think it's the issue of the day. Can you give me one agency within the government what that you would education defund? education just to start? You would eliminate the Department and, of and Education. There's no need for it. Rock. There's no, and there's, there's many others. But, but please, I'm telling you, you, you know, it, it seems to go over everybody's head when I talk about this balanced budget amendment. <laughs> in a sense, well, but I don't seem to get any, any uh, I'm not getting any positive feedback. I'll, I'll tell you why. The positive feedback would have come 20 years ago when the budget was manageable. It's not manageable. But, 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 it's the size of government itself that has become the problem. You know what, yeah. I this is a country that defeated Hitler and the Nazis. This is a country that put a man on the moon. You know what we're lacking? More than anything is the will to do these things. It's not a matter of do this or do that. You don't agree? The will to do it? You know what? I'm saying to you that the, I personally feel that that's the one thing that the movement that the Tea Party could be involved in that could actually have national implications. The people rising up and saying to the government, we've had enough. And we want to tell you, when I have a balanced budget amendment, you have to get your house in order. So you know what happens? And I'll give you a day-to-day a, a day -to -day example. We're, we're faced with a $310 million deficit in Nassau County, are we not? So what we have to do, is things can't remain the same in the police department, right? They can't. There's three quarters of, or uh, 700, 700 million maybe out of your $2 billion budget. I'm giving you a real life example. If I was down there, you say, well, we have to change things. It can't be the way it is always. So we close some precincts. We don't need them anymore. We're going to keep some policing centers. And we did, we, if we kept the same, uh, the same, uh, uh, I don't think there's a there. person in the room that would disagree with balancing a budget. To me, it's far beyond that at this point. That was the only point I was trying to make. I, I don't, you know something? Uh, I have to disagree with you there. But you know, let's look, 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 look at this. Look, look at this for once, for example. How do you stop a government that, since Obama has been in office, the, 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 we've lost two million, million, not, not, million jobs. In other words, if there were, I don't know how many jobs that there were, but, but there's two million jo less jobs in our country today. Yet they seem to hire 130,000 more people are, are in our government at this particular point. The only, you see, you see, maybe from the inside, I'm looking at the inside. just made his point. It's, it's, that is the answer, in my opinion. If you will get to people like yourselves, and you decide to say, listen, we're going to tell the government, stop the spending. We told them, they don't listen. Nassau government was to raise their salaries, and because the Tea Party stood up, that got cut off. Well, here's what I'd like to do. I want to, I want to get the uh, soapbox going up, but first... Yeah, we didn't have the debate format uh, because just we didn't want that format. This, 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 this. point that was aimed at me and that circulated a falsehood about my own background. Can I speak to that? Well, I don't want to get into a, a debate format, so I'd like to... Uh, That's a question. That's a enough, it's a soapbox time. But the, the first... Let him speak! Let him speak! Short and sweet. Go up to the mic. Let him speak at the French you can speak. I just want to be sure I'm finished. If I'm finished, I want to thank each and every one of you for the opportunity to be with you tonight and to address the important issues facing our county. And uh, I look forward to, if I'm successful in the primary, to having your support. I was 
Because the, the, the person that sometimes, you know, I, I wonder, the person we're really trying to get out of here is, is Carol McCarthy, and, uh, and I hope you agree with that. Okay, okay thank you so much for that background. Thank you, Maxie Girl, for coming. We look forward to a...